Hello! Before we go to the tutorial, I would like to say thanks to all of my top 10 supporters on Kofi.com. So thank you so much to Bibbs, Boniv, Adam Wu, Trey, Francis Bouchamp, Brandon In, Christopher N, Martino Mingioni, and Majel. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, guys. And um, yeah, uh, if you want to support the channel, you can go to coffee.com slash ID. You can buy some product there, and it means it really means a lot to me. Thank you. Let's just move on to the tutorial. Let's go. Hello. Welcome back to another video. Um, now you see my face. Uh, it's 2,000 uh, subscribers special. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to show my face again in the future. Who knows? Let me know down in the comment if you want to see my face or not. Um, but yeah, don't uh, don't comment about that. It made me a little bit insecure. Anyway, a little bit of a backstory. Today's uh, video is going to cover about uh, the Counter Strike uh, Counter Strike Two Dynamic Smoke. Um, why do I want to cover that? So this dude, I don't know if he's a dude or not though. So Hosein eight o three eight. He says, "Cool, now make CS 2s and I was like, you're not impressed, buddy, with my skill of making the Valorant smoke bomb? And I said, uh, yeah, sure, I'll make one, I guess, to impress you, a uh, stranger on the internet. But yeah, um, if you want me to make something else, just leave that in the comment down below. And so yeah. Anyway, so this is what we are going to make. Um, basic smoke. So it will spawn smoke. And then there is like the feature of... Uh, CS2 where you can carve the bullet, uh, carve the smoke with bullet, I mean, and then you can also, I mean, you can also carve it with frag, all right, maybe you cannot really see it, maybe I need to spawn it right here, and then spawn the frag right there, now oh, it's gone, oh, magic, oh, not really magic, but it's programming, so that's what happened, uh, CS2 has that um, what is it? Dynamic smoke, right? So we are going to do it, but in Godot way. And I think it's much slim, simpler uh, approach. Not really, I think, as complicated as or as sophisticated as Valve's, right? So actually, uh, someone already did uh, a video on this like seven months ago. And it's actually like inspired me to do uh, this video as well. So a YouTuber by the name of Craigs vs. Uh, Game Dev, they have a good, what is it? Uh, video on this one, uh, five minutes video on how to make uh, smoke in Godot, like the basic concept of it. And yeah, I use the main concept, but the algorithm that they use is a little bit uh, different. It's a little bit weird. Um, there is a problem when you like, actually it will, it will go through wall if the wall is thin enough. Because the way the algorithm goes, is like it's checking for uh, a radius and then it will like, in increments like let's say one and then zero minus one minus two minus three minus four so if it in minus two and minus three there is a wall it will not spawn the voxel but if in minus five there is a empty space it will spawn the voxel there because the algorithm says like oh there is an empty space so i just spawn it just to i don't know if you have <laughs> my yeah just to give you a little bit of an idea what I'm at what I'm talking about. So basically, uh, hold on, where's the smoke voxel? So the way that this work is that it will spawn a cube, basically, that will check for um, collision, right? So if the collision happen on a certain point, it will not spawn on that point. Something like that. It will go wrap around the wall, but maybe I need to make it a little bit in the middle. So you can see what's going on. So something like that, right? Uh, Kriggs versus game devs algorithm, it will check, uh, it will continuously check. And then when it's finally empty, it will spawn there where it should, where it's not supposed to. So my solution to that is that, oh, by the way, this is the first step of making the uh, smoke grenade, right? Create the voxel first. And uh, I got, I learned about Floodville uh, algorithm. So this is from GD Quest. This is pretty good. Uh, you don't need to translate it to from different language, I mean. So they already made like this, but it is utilized for 2D. But basically the algorithm is kind of the same. It start from the middle and then it expand. It spawn like four cubes around like this coordinate. And then it will spawn more cubes on next coordinate. And then it will spawn next cube on more coordinates. 
So basically that. And what's the limit? The limit is the uh, max distance. So let's say, I don't know, maybe like it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess it's like, if it is more than six, then do not spawn, right? If the distance is like more than six units, then it will not spawn. So basically that's the algorithm that I use. It's better because when it's uh, checking for a collision on, a, on this point, for example, it will not spawn anything there. Thus, it will not spawn the other expanding voxel. So I think it's much better uh, algorithm for this example. But this is the simpler example, uh, what is it, algorithm than I think Valve use. Because hey, if I can make what Valve make, then maybe I'll work for a Valve instead of making uh, YouTube videos like this. So basically that. Now let's talk about the fog itself. Um, Godot has a specific node or a special node to render a fog. But you cannot really see it over here, so it's called fog volume. You can just search for it like fog volume here. A node used to add local fog with the volume fog effect. But if you make it like this, it will have this warning. You can read it by yourself. So basically, it needs like a uh, world environment settings here or node like this one, for example. You can go to this uh, fog drop down menu and, excuse me, volumetric fog drop down menu and click enable. And set the density to zero. Don't set it to any value because it will render the fog globally. And then we don't want to do that. So we set it to zero. And um, yeah, I guess that's the setup, right? So if we go and add fog volume now, it will add a volume. Now to give it a little bit of a life, to give it of an animation. So as you might see, it's not a default. Oh, where is it? Oh, the fog. Maybe I need to make it a little bit like this. You can actually assign a material here also, like new fog material, you know, like set it to two maybe, or maybe one is just enough. And then there is like a density uh, texture where you can add like a variety, like a noise texture uh, for that. And as you might see here, it's kind of looks static if we just use the default um, fog volume. And if you see my fog volume, it's better. I don't know if it's better, but it has animation to it, right? So how do I do that? With the power of shader. I'm not good with writing shader, but it's actually much, much easier. So this is tips for you. If you want to write shader and try to learn shader, like writing it down, you can go here actually and then convert to shader material. And then it will like convert the material to shader material. So basically this is... Uh, the shader form of that fog material, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to go back to this later on. But what I did was, or is, was, I don't know what the correct tense is there. Um, where is my smoke voxel? Here we go. I used visual shader um, because I'm too lazy to learn how to write a proper shader. But as you might see, uh, just a little bit of a comparison. So this block here, is actually the same as this line. Hold on, where is it? This line over here. Like, um, so uh, there is a merit, I guess, to learn how to write a shader because it could be achieved in one line instead of like complicated jumbled spaghetti of a node like I did, but it's more fun. <laughs> I don't know, it's just challenging. So this is the translation of that calculation, basically. This block is a translation of that, uh, or a visual shader version of that. So yeah, what it does, uh, you might ask, um, it is basically calculating the edge uh, fade. So it doesn't really like fading right away, or like um, you want to make it a little bit smoother, or you might want to make it a little bit like sharper. So basically, this is the one that, um, what is it, dictate that. That's why it is, uh, what is it? Uh, multiplied by edge of fade there, right? Okay. So basically just uh, basic shader tricks. Uh, you just add two different texture here, noise texture. And mind you, this is a 3D noise texture. Wait, oh, it's over here, All right? So it's 3D noise texture, like detail. And then there is the main noise texture. And I think if you want to see like, sorry, my camera is kind of on, on the way. So make it a little bit brighter uh, than the darker side. But for the details, I think you can add like uh, something that has more variety uh, and a little bit more contrast. So it has a darker area. 
to make that edge more or the animation more pronounced. So that's my tips. Uh, again, oops, uh, this is just noise uh, scroll and a noise scale and then uh, the what axis do you want it to scroll and so yeah keep it uh, keep the scale like a little bit high so close to one maybe not 0 0.9 but 0 0.75 is fine to me but for the detail i think keep it like a little bit smaller or you make it larger i guess if you multiply it like 0 0.25 it means that the uv is getting bigger so yeah it works a little bit differently so yeah this one is more detailed basically and this one just adding that life you know to the smoke itself and then scroll on whatever axis that you want All right density set it to 1.5 and so yeah as you might maybe you might notice that the voxel itself is actually like 0 0.7 or 0 0.75 actually uh, but the fog the fog volume is larger than that it's actually one uh, point uh, bigger than that one unit bigger than that so yeah, just keep it like that so it overlap from one another. So basically, that's the main smoke, right? So again, let's see. Uh, so that's the built-in smoke, and then this is uh, our modified smoke. Okay, now let's learn how to make this. You know, like how to carve it with bullet. So basically, if you add this uh, fog volume here, right, make it a little bit bigger. I think like five, maybe. And then we add a more fog volume. It will actually editing, right? Editing, additive, have an additive property. But if we say smaller, I guess yeah, too small. Make it smaller like this, and then you set the density to minus ten, for example. Oops. Oh, because yeah, I need to make a new material here, new fog material. And set the density to minus ten, for example. It actually will carve out uh the fog so that concept can be used to uh apply the uh, bullet carving so we had a hit scan bullet over here i mean i don't want to talk too much about the hit scan bullet concept but basically it's just uh make the fog volume size bigger uh as the same as the distance that from the gun to the point that it collide and then uh set the density to minus 10 and so yeah well a little bit of a funny phenomenon i guess um if you go to fog volume and then you change the shape to cylinder which is what uh, the shape that i use for the hit scan bullet so it's cylinder cylinder cylind cylindrix cylinder <laughs> i don't know cylinder and then the fog volume if you set the z like maybe you scale it like to 100 nothing happened it only affect the height if you like you know set the on y axis so that's why when you align in with the bullet you need to make it like uh, rotated 90 degrees on x axis right so you can set the uh, size on the y axis to make it bigger to accordingly to the distance between the gun and the collision point so it will uh, spawn that anti-smoke uh, or anti-fog um node or whatever you might call it right so you might see here uh, that's why in the transformation here on the hit scan bullet and the, for the fog fog volume is minus 90 on the oh let's see. it's minus 90 on the um what is it rotation on the x-axis but that helps a lot all right so with the frag grenade i think we're gonna sh make it a little bit smaller and yeah, for the frag grenade, it's actually just using the same uh, flood fill uh, voxel, what is it, script, but I remake or rename it anti smoke flood fill. So instead of spawning smoke, I spawn anti smoke voxel, which is, uh, let me see, anti smoke voxel. Anti smoke voxel is containing a voxel but with negative density so that's what happened when you see um when i carve the uh, smoke bomb here Oof. all right okay right so that's pretty simple implementation i guess uh for the flood uh for the uh cs2 dynamic smoke 
and yeah oh maybe just talk a little bit about the frag grenade vfx it's pretty simple it's just like a gpu particle with sparks sprite it's actually not sprite it's actually a mesh like um where is it draw passes here we go it's a cylinder you know um a capsule rather and then it has like a billboard uh what is it oh maybe i need to set it to billboard billboard uh plane let me go this way So you will facing the player direction no matter where you are and um yeah control it with the animation so when it stop it will uh destroy itself right so basically it that's pretty simple simple implementation of um smoke grenade in the godot game engine it's godot 4 by the way and oh one more thing i forgot to mention if you want to uh what is it uh, set the resolution of or the quality of the fog you can go to setting and then type in fog on the filter setting over here and then maybe go to advanced setting and then check it uh, or turn it on and then you're going to go make this vo volume size and volume depth in higher value with the filter uh, to make it look better or look more detailed but I, again i think it costs you some performance uh, if you see the gameplay here on top right corner, I don't know if that's clear enough. It's actually running 60 when I spawn even multiple, um, what is it, uh, grenade, right? Even when I shoot. So Godot has actually a pretty good optimization on implementing the fog system here. But again, um, you want to, yeah. My, be mindful on ch uh, checking those those settings that I mentioned before. So yeah, just pick the balance between quality and performance. You know, and vice versa. I think that's like the basic game uh, development for you there. All right. So I guess that's it. Hopefully, uh, the username. Uh, what's his name again? No, not that. Not that one. Not that tab. So hopefully. Posing 8038, you you impressed by me now, and uh, leave a comment if you feel impressed. And so yeah, uh, again, thank you so much for watching until the end. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe we can like reach I don't know uh, one million in one month. Who knows? Um, yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can go to coffeecom slash ID and buy something over there, like some pretty good quality content over there and again thank you so much for watching until the end my name is Arifido Hangara sending out see you next time and bye